Our next lesson is 1-6, deductive reasoning. In 1.4, when we did inductive reasoning, we made conclusions based on prior kind of examples or patterns that we were able to determine. Deductive reasoning is going to help us make valid conclusions based on facts or definitions that we know. We're going to first start with the two laws as our vocabulary, the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. The law of detachment states, if a conditional statement and its hypothesis are true, so the conditional statement and then you know the hypothesis, if they're both true, then the conclusion also has to be true. Now over on the right, instead of symbols, we're just gonna write an example of this. But here's the thing, this requires writing multiple sentences. And I'm sorry, but there's really not a lot of room to make that happen. So I'm gonna pause the video and write the sentence. I'd like you to then write it down and then we'll look at how the example kind of takes it and goes from there. Okay, here is our statement. Mrs. Fry goes for a walk after school, Thursdays and Fridays. Today is Thursday. What can we conclude? Again, pause the video, write this down, and then press play and we'll talk about the conclusion. If our statement is true, and today is in fact Thursday, our conclusion is that Mrs. Fry will go for a walk after school. That's what we write down. Make sure to complete the sentence. Mrs. Fry will go for a walk after school. This is using the law of detachment. The next law that we'll use in deductive reasoning is called the law of syllogism. It says given two true conditionals with the conclusion of the first being the hypothesis, well I couldn't even say it, the hypothesis of the second. All right, let's try that again. Given two true conditional statements where the conclusion of the first statement is the hypothesis of the second. There then exists a third true conditional that we can write using the hypothesis of the first statement and then the conclusion of the second. I know, that's really a lot. So let's look at an example on the right to see how we can kind of work through this law. Here are our two original conditional statements. If you get an A on your math test, then you get to go to a movie. If you go to a movie, then you will get popcorn. Notice in the first conditional, the conclusion is actually the hypothesis for the second conditional. So when this is true, what we can do is rewrite the two statements into one, kind of eliminating those two parts. Our third conditional that would be true is this. If you get an A on your math test, and I know this takes a while to write out, sorry. If you get an A on your math test, what is the ultimate final conclusion? Then you will get popcorn. This is using the law of syllogism. Kind of cuts out that middle statement for each of those original conditionals. Here's another example for the law of detachment. This one I just want you to watch and listen to. We don't have to rewrite anything out on it. This law of logic states that if you start with a hypothesis of a true conditional, then the conclusion is also true. So here is the original conditional. If a figure is a square, this is our hypothesis, then it is a rectangle. That is our conclusion. It says this figure is a square. The hypothesis is true. It has that right angle and all four sides are equal. The conclusion is then if the one side is a right, or if the one angle is a right angle, that we could show all the rest of them are as well. And that would make it a rectangle. We're coming to this conclusion based on a fact from the given hypothesis. Let's try a non-math related statement. It says, use the law of detachment to write a conclusion. If a dog goes out to play in the woods, then the dog will get dirty. Carrie's dog Spot goes out to play in the woods. What can we conclude? Well, if our conditional is a true statement and the hypothesis is true, 
We can conclude that Spot, the dog, or we can just say Spot, will get dirty. So it's kind of like just rewriting the conclusion with a specific example. That's the law of detachment. You guys try this one. See if you can read the statement, or read the conditional and then the statement, and then write out something related to the conclusion. Pause while you do that and then press play when you're done, and we'll see if we have something that's a match. So I wrote that a carpenter ant is an insect. It says then the animal is an insect. Well, we've defined what we want our animal to be here. So notice instead of using the word animal, I actually put carpenter ant in its place. If a carpenter ant is a type of ant, then it is also an insect. And that is all the law of detachment. Here's our final law using the law of syllogism. Remember, it has us using ser a series of conditional statements together. If it is 5 p.m., then it is almost time for dinner. If it is almost time for dinner, then I should stop watching TV. Notice that the conclusion for the first conditional statement becomes the hypothesis for the second statement. If the conditionals are both true, we can conclude the following. If it is 5 p.m., which would be the original hypothesis, then I should stop watching TV, which is the ultimate final conclusion. That third conditional statement kind of eliminates again that middle part. Let's see if we can apply that independently down below. Use the law of syllogism to write a conclusion. If it is raining, then the sidewalk will be wet. If the sidewalk is wet, then the sidewalk will be slippery. If we know these two statements to be true, and we look outside and it is raining, what is our conclusion? The sidewalk will be slippery. So again, we're kind of eliminating the conclusion that matches the hypothesis. And we go right from the original hypothesis to the ultimate final conclusion. The sidewalk will be slippery. And there you go, that's your conclusion. So when you get these types of examples, everybody, you won't have to write them all out. You'll likely just have to make a conclusion. So it'll be a little bit less writing. So hopefully that is helpful. Now down below, I'm gonna make a couple of changes on this statement that I wrote because it wouldn't be a true Mrs. Fry lesson if I didn't do that. So, so don't try that lesson or that question until I make that change. Hang on just one moment. All right, so here are my changes. It says, use the law of syllogism to write a conclusion. If the temperature is below 58 degrees Fahrenheit, then the heater will turn on. If the heater turns on, then the air inside will be dry. These are our two conditionals. It says the temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. What can we conclude? Well, we know that the heater will turn on, and if the heater turns on, there's another conclusion. That conclusion simply is the air inside will be dry. And this is lesson 1.6 everybody. Using either the law of detachment or the law of syllogism to come up with conclusions.